Hey everyone, Troy with Annihilator Air Guns and Tuning. I am here today with a crawl puncher breaker. Uh, what I'm going to show you guys today is how to disassemble your rifle. Uh, I do have this gun already degassed, but what I'm going to tell you to do on every rifle before you do any kind of maintenance service, always degas the rifle. You can see it's already on zero, but I'll show you how to degas it. So what you want to do is remove your cap. Some of the models have a two-piece screw-on cap. You can see that it's actually threaded right here on the end. Some of them just pop off. Whichever one you have, just remove that. <clears throat> now, the tool you're going to need for that is a 7 8 inch six-point socket. This is the only thing that fits this gauge. Okay. Now, there are some metric wrenches that want to fit, but the socket side or box end of the wrench <clears throat> will not fit this gauge the way it's made. Uh, it does have 12 sides, but it has six long sides, six really short sides. So this is really the only tool that works. So you're simply gonna put it on the gauge. <clears throat> Excuse me, give it a twist. You're gonna twist it. Gonna, probably gonna be a full turn, maybe a turn and a half. And there's an O-ring inside that's gonna displace. Now when that displace, the air pressure is actually gonna pop it out. It does make a little pop. Uh, be ready for it. Uh, it did scare me the first time it popped out so uh, just know that it is going to do that and then just simply let it degas once it degasses you want to make sure that you unscrew the gauge uh, almost all the way out so that o-ring will reseat and then tighten it all the way back down uh, once you do that you can simply put the fill cap back over the end <clears throat> now on both stocks whether the walnut or the synthetic they are going to have a bolt that runs up through the bottom of the pistol grip. That is a five millimeter Allen key. Uh, so you're simply going to take that five millimeter Allen key and it should be provided with your rifle. And you're simply going to take that screw uh, loose. Now on the synthetic, uh, the Allen key is a longer key, fits all the way down in there and it does have a little plastic cap there when you get ready to put it back on. You'll probably just need to take the Allen key, hook it inside, press it down, give it a little pop uh, that cap will come off and that'll give you access to that allen key <clears throat> or the allen bolt so once you've done that you're simply going to separate the action from the stock itself so let's do that here all right so we'll set the stock hip here on the box so it doesn't get damaged then what you have here this is going to be your air reservoir this is your trigger of course your scope base this is going to be the uh, linkage that actually moves comes back and connects into the trigger itself so when you pull the trigger this rod pulls in let's turn it off safety so when you do that that'll press in presses in on this transfer bar and that is what actually releases the sear so you do notice there's a little screw here um, a screw here plus the adjustment that you can do here on the back so that's how you would actually go in and do the adjustments and stuff on the trigger itself but uh, once we do this next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to remove this nut I believe it is a five and a half millimeter uh, metric um, or a seven thirty seconds fits as well but you'll just simply place that right on take that off you want to make sure you have a small container to put all of your bits and pieces in so that you don't lose those last thing you want to do is drop and lose one of these little pieces when you have your rifle apart so what I do is I'll take an old pellet tin or in this case um, I'm actually just going to use the cap of a uh, of a scope I'm just going to drop that there inside next thing we're going to do is actually remove the barrel so on the top of the action there are two set screws here simply going to place the allen key inside we're going to give that a twist give it just a couple of turns make sure you release it from the barrel don't have to remove them all the way once you've done that simply give the barrel a little twist and pull and that entire barrel comes out now what you want to do is inspect on the barrel itself um, you can see where those set screws keep that barrel lined up there are two o-rings one on each side 
and those actually cover up this one's been opened up a little bit but those are going to cover up that transfer port on either side helps keep air from going out one side or the other of that breech retains more of that power for your rifle <clears throat> so we'll set the barrel here out of the way next thing you're going to do is that same allen key is going to fit down in these two holes as well so simply take the allen key inside again give it just a couple of turns make sure that the bolts raised enough or Once you've done that, now you can actually separate that tube from the action itself, okay? So what you have here, this is a burst disc. Um, if you do ever have a leaking rifle, sometimes this is the culprit. I've had several of these come in um, and they need just a little bit of twist, you know, I mean, barely any, just a little bit of a twist. Uh, to seal that because I do get a little bit of leak there um, You know, so that'd be a first place that you ever wanted to check for a leak second place is going to be your actual transfer port Third place is going to be the actual fill assembly Those are really the only three places that this rifle can leak with the exception of with age You know, you may get an o-ring that where the valve connects to the tube um, or the fill adapter connects to the tube. So those are the only places that this rifle can leak So once you've got it in this point, uh, it's very easy to determine where that leak is But um, you know if you ever want to do a leak test, you know, that's how you'll do that <clears throat> Now to remove the valve itself keep this on The tube itself on the reservoir. Uh, it is a little difficult and tedious to get lined back up if you ever loosen it up uh, If you do need to adjust it, it uses that same size uh, Allen key that the barrel and the bottom of the action use to hold the reservoir in place You know simply loosen that up if you do have something that's out of alignment But uh, what I actually do is I place the action itself here um, In a soft jaw vise and hold this action in place when I'm performing work on the rifle it Gives me a little bit of leverage uh, if you do need to remove your valve <clears throat> They do use some Loctite on these threads. So you want to hold a heat gun on high setting just above the reservoir itself again make sure this thing is degassed but you don't have to worry about heating the valve itself what you want to heat is this little one inch section where the valve screws in i don't know if you can see that little area right there but that is where the two meet together so this inch <clears throat> you want to heat it until it is actually too hot for you to want to touch um, takes a minute or two to get it that hot but once you do that, I've got it in my soft jaw chuck. I'll put just a little bit of leverage here on the top of the scope mount. And the valve itself is slotted for a 13 millimeter wrench. You'll simply place that on the valve. Um, you know, give it a twist. That'll break loose and let you unthread that if you need to get inside of the valve. So I've already taken this one apart. Let me grab that 13 millimeter. Um, see if we can open it up. <clears throat> All right, without the vise, I don't know if I'll be able to do this by hand, but it has been loosened up once, so we may be able to. So I'll put this down on the table, try to give it a little bit of leverage. Seems to be turning a little bit. Again, that's where the vice really comes in handy. It holds it everything in place for you, but we are going to
again, this is a modified valve, so it's going to look just slightly different in a couple of ways, and I'll show those to you. So this is going to be your valve assembly itself. So what you have here, this is going to be your valve stem, transfer port, and this is going to be your uh, burst disc. You have an O-ring around the valve itself that's going to seal into the reservoir, and then you have this small cap here on the end. Now, this one's been opened up to allow more airflow in, along with on the inside. Uh, got the dead blow valve assembly um, in place with the new spring. Simply pop out. going to be this is the upgraded uh, hardened uh, stem it does not have an o-ring it doesn't have a step down in reduction so it is the same diameter all the way into the valve uh, pop it head uh, and what I do on this is I actually taper that um, this one's been turned down o-ring so these are some stuff that I do but uh, this is going to be your pop it seal you can actually uh, chuck this up in a, uh, a drill press or in a, uh, in a lathe, a pair of pliers or something, maybe apply a little heat uh, to break up the Loctite. You can take this poppet head off if you need to replace the poppet seal if it were to be leaking. So that's how you take care of that. <clears throat> we are going to move on to the action itself. This is going to be your power adjuster. Um, there is a small hole just offset of the breech screw. And what you'll do is loosen that up. There is a small small screw there. Drop it into your little container, turn it over, give it a little tap, and you're going to have a spring and a pin. Now what these do, these are going to be what hold the power adjuster in place. Now this power adjuster has been opened up to 3 16ths of an inch, uh, so it's just been drilled out to allow more airflow. But there's a little pin there on the side that lines up little groove on the receiver itself and that's what keeps it on high to low so <clears throat> take that out put here on the side on the top here you have your cheek rest simply remove that remove that screw Put it in your little catch container and pull off your cheek rest. So now that exposes up the action itself. You really don't have to worry about removing the safety or anything for any reason. If you were to ever need to, <clears throat> there is a screw here uh, with a ball that actually holds that safety in place so that it doesn't pop out. So uh, if you do need to take, you ever need to replace your cocking lever make sure that you break it open uh, you're just going to simply take small flathead screwdriver we're going to remove this back screw and then here on the side Try to find a flathead that just barely fits on the inside so that you have full contact on that screw. These are uh, not the hardest of screws, so they will mar up on you a little bit if you don't use the right size tools. But you'll pull that little screw out, drop it in your little catch container. And then that simply removes your entire lever. So we'll put the lever here to the side. <clears throat> that screw 
from the back actually pops in and screws into this little piece. So that just slides out, has a hole there all the way through it threaded, and that's what holds that backside in. So drop it into your catch container. Now you will need to completely remove the power adjuster <clears throat> in order to get out your bolt. So this power adjuster here on the back, you're gonna remove that. You're gonna remove your springs. I actually use a two spring. Um, the two springs are opposite coils. So they are coiled in opposite direction one inside the other. <clears throat> I actually cut those shorter. Uh, the two together give you the same cocking effort as one long heavier spring uh, and it allows me to cut that shorter so that the hammer is not in contact with the spring. Uh, after the firing it gives it that debound. So that same screwdriver you used on the lever fits perfectly to the little screw guide on the hammer itself. So take that screw out now this screw and the small screw and the lever the little heads look exactly the same but the longer screw is going to be the one that goes into the hammer so when you're putting them back together the longer screw goes in the hammer shorter screw goes in the lever if you put the longer screw in the lever it'll actually stick out the bottom and it'll catch on the action you won't be able to cock or close the gun so but after you've done that simply pull back here on the bolt that's going to allow you to pull out the hammer you can see there's where the pin from the cocking lever pulls the hammer back that's where your spring goes down inside and that is your actual striker there on the hammer itself then you'll simply pull out the bolt so this is going to be your bolt your arm pivot pin and then this is the slide uh, that goes in between your hammer is going to sit down here bottom part of this pin catches into that groove on the hammer and that's what slides it forward and back so keep this pin now the long section here is going to face back um, if you were to put it in that way there's a spring inside the breech itself that won't allow you to close it so it comes out that way just remember it goes back in that way so we're going to set that right here off to the front <clears throat> and now you have disassembled the bolt and then here's you're going to have your trigger sear and your transfer now one of the things I do and I'll show you guys the trigger too is you'll pull that trigger pin or pivot pin out and drop it in our little catch uh, never really remove any of the other stuff really no need to there's a spring that sets underneath you'll see it there simply remove that and then this is going to give you, if you can see that, this is your actual sear itself. Now, what I do <clears throat> is I have a polishing wheel on a small bench top grinder. All I do is hold it just like this with that trigger sear down, touch it up against that polishing wheel. It's almost like a brush wheel. Uh, just make sure that I've got it on their level, move it back and forth with the wheel running. Uh, five to six seconds is all it takes. Uh, let's see, we may be able to zoom in on this just a little bit. See if that will focus. All it does is takes that last little section. You can see you still have plenty of metal there. It just takes that last little bit of section and gives it just a little bit of a profile. And when you do that, because the way this sear works is when the hammer comes back, that actually pops up in place and the hammer rides up against that so your hammer is catching right there with it straight when you start to pull that trigger down you're actually pushing the hammer back so that little bit of profile you can see that when it's in place and engaged it gives it that smooth rounded edge and that's what's going to lower that trigger weight and allow that hammer to fire smoother. So that's what we did in our previous video to get that one pound trigger pull. So got that apart. So now you've pretty well disassembled the entire breech. 
let's go ahead and zoom this back out. <clears throat> so entire breech section is taken apart. Really nothing you have to do to any of this. Uh, if you do the polish on the trigger sear, you can use all of the stock springs, everything in the trigger itself. Be very careful if you decide you want to put take any metal off of that sear. Uh, please do it at your own risk. You do, if you take off too much metal, you do run the risk of your uh, sear failing on you uh, and firing when it shouldn't uh, in a direction you may not want the gun to be firing. So do not attempt to do any work on that sear unless you are fully comfortable with, uh, with what you're doing. So, and then on this end, of course, we pulled that fill cap off. You have two set screws here that are going to hold this barrel band in, in place. One of the first things I do to a gun uh, after I tune it and start putting it back together is I'm going to loosen those two screws. What that allows me to do is when I put that barrel back in, <clears throat> it allows this to slide side to side and allows that barrel to center itself when I tighten up the breech screws. So once I tighten up those breech screws, um, and I've got the barrel back in place, and this is around the shroud. It's just gonna allow this to free. So I know that barrel is gonna be centered going through the scope base, back into the breech. Like I said, this is on assembly. With this being able to pivot, once I've got everything in place and all the breech screws and everything tightened back down, the reservoir, everything tightened back down, and I know the barrel is uh, you know where it needs to be then I'll tighten these up and hold it there so if you are getting some funny shots one of the things you may want to try is just loosen up those two breech screws <clears throat> let the barrel push this where it needs to be and then tighten it back up because that could be putting just a little bit of unneeded flex causing the barrel um, to push to one side or the other um, and, and get a little bit of flex in the barrel itself so uh, if you do need to remove the fill cap, I've only had to do it one time. Uh, there is, almost looks exactly like your poppet head, uh, except for it is cut off there about a quarter of an inch, and that actually sets in place and seals off this end. So it looks just like the valve on the inside, um, has the same cap and everything, uh, spring inside that holds it, but what you'll want to do is uh, remove your fill cap. Again, I put this thing in a vise. You're gonna want to get uh, a piece of brass rod or something that is this same diameter or almost exactly the same diameter. You actually slide it through. Use that as a wrench because if you do mar up the insides of this, you run the risk of the gun leaking around the uh, fill probe when you try to fill the gun. So you wanna make sure you get as close to perfect fit as possible slide that through, put this in the vise. Again, you're gonna to need to heat up that inch, inch and a half of reservoir tube to get that Loctite broken down. Slide that in and you're gonna to have to crank on that and get that to pop loose. You'll unscrew it, take it apart just like you would the valve itself. <clears throat> and then of course, reverse order, putting it back together. So guys, that's how you take apart a crawl puncher breaker. Uh, if you guys do have any questions or you need any support, please email us at annihilator.airguns at gmail.com or give us a call at 513-560, excuse me, 513-580-GUNS. So that's 513-580-GUNS. Uh, also check us out on our website at annihilatorairguns.com. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.